Good evening, everyone. This is uh, God has blessed us to see the first day of the eighth month, and the numerical number for eight is new beginning. And I'm and I'm praying, and I hope that the, that's, that you're praying as I'm praying with all that is happening among us. So this uh, pandemic that that I call, well, the Word of God calls a pestilence. Good evening, Sint. I enjoyed my brother this morning. He, he's, I, I, I wish he would do just do more, just do more. He, he's blessing me, yeah. and I, I, I was hoping more. I'm hoping that more listen to him from Virginia because I've, I've told him about my brother that he, that he can teach. Bootleg preacher, but. Uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to go to God in prayer. Father God, it's in the name of Jesus I come to you thanking you for this privilege. Thank you, God, for how that you have blessed us. And Father, and my, my brother that's teaching this word, because we, Lord, no, we, we need this. We need this. Forgive me for my sins, my shortcomings, things, Lord, that I might not even be aware of, sins or oh, oh, Omission, sense of commission. I, I want to, Lord, be worthy of your righteousness that you've imputed to us. And once again, Lord, I ask that you take me out of self. Take, hide me, Lord, behind the cross. Never at any time let any flesh be on parade. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. Brother Ed, you did a tremendous job this morning. I was trying to do three things at one time, and at 74 years old, you you cannot multitask. You should just task and leave it alone. But but uh, I didn't miss any of the word. Thank you for blessing me that the, that with this great doctrine in the book of Romans. Uh we're in the very last chapter of Revelation, but we're not through. We will, we'll do an overview uh, starting next week. Some things that we, I feel like that uh, I might have missed or not said enough about. And, <laughs> and but uh, we've got to be careful. Make sure that, that uh, we study like my brother study to show yourself approved unto God workmen need not be ashamed rightly dividing this word of truth this uh, book of revelation is a book of prophecy that that uh, we learn from the very first verse of the very first chapter the, the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave unto him to show unto his servants, which is us, things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it, that signs, by his angel, by his angel unto his servant John. And we are actually in the same capacity as John as servants, but God, Jesus used John as a scribe to write the book. John John is not the author. John is the secretary, per se, of, of this book. And and God uh, told him to, to write and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. And those seven churches represent every church that you can think of in 2021. There's something good in it. There's something bad. The things we do need for correction and but uh, two of them were in pretty good shape. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Philadelphia, well, Philadelphia, we, uh, they were the church at the open door. And when that door was open in heaven, God, Jesus, was saying that they were ready. The door was open. But, but let's, take, let's, take a look at, let's take a look at this. And it's necessary. Good evening, uh, Sister Loretta. You're so faithful. Uh, Sister Fat. And, uh, Revelation, the 22nd chapter, actually, uh, 
uh, there should be no division between Revelation 21 and 27 and 22 and 1. I was waiting on you, Nadine. Because Revelation uh, chapter 22 that we're going to study tonight, verses 1 through 5, they are the concluding verses of chapter 21, the very last verse of 21. So let's, let's take a look at it. In, in uh, chapter 21, the very last verse, 27, said that, And there shall in no wise enter into it, which is New Jerusalem, anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And let me go and read the first five verses of the 22nd chapter of Revelation. Because when you see the word and, it's, it's, it's still dealing with the same subject. And we will not be dealing with heaven anymore because New Jerusalem came down out of heaven from God. And we, we'll go back and discuss that because we, uh, we've been taught that we're going to heaven. We're going to sit down and, and sing with the angels. Number one, angels don't sing, but the four and twenty elders did. And we might sing with them, but... But we will be in New Jerusalem that came, came down. But I don't get ahead of myself. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, just like the diamond, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. New Jerusalem, not in heaven, New Jerusalem. And his servant shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in the forehead. And there shall be no night there. New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem, now keep in mind. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. Now, we're not going to be in heaven I want you to turn. I'm not going to turn. Turn to Revelation 5 and 10 and see where we will reign. Because this verse here, 22 and 5, says that, that uh, they shall reign forever and ever, which we shall reign forever and ever. Where are we going to reign? Where are we going to, going to reign? We, we sing some nice songs. Like putting on a long white robe, which we're not. We're going to be dressed in fine linen. The, the robes are for the martyrs. But, but, let, but I ask you again. Where shall we reign? After, after the elders sang that new song in verse 9 of, of the fifth chapter. Saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us or brought us back. To God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And at that very moment, what happened has made us unto our God kings and priests. And we shall reign on earth. Forget, forget about it. Heaven is going to be a temporary place for us. After the... After, uh, that the angel, the angel, there were seven angels that, that had the plagues. After they showed John, I'm going to show you the bride the, and the lamb's wife. It, the, 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 the bride wasn't the wife yet until there was the, what we call, what, what the Bible calls the marriage supper of the lamb. And at that time, the bride became the wife and they sat down at, at, with the marriage supper of the, of the lamb and that's when Jesus was no longer the prince. He became 
the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and you, you will see him coming out in, in Revelation 19, because we are there with him, we are dressed in fine linen, white and clean, which the, which the Bible declares is the righteousness of his saints. We're not in white robes. Read your Bible. We're not in white robes. We're in white linen, white, uh, bright and clean, white and clean, which is the righteousness now of the saints. It's no longer imputed righteousness. Right now we are the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. He's righteous. We'll be righteous. So, so at that time, there will be no need for imputed righteousness because we, we are going to be with him forever. And after the marriage supper of the Lamb, and he's crowned king of kings and lord of lords, when he comes in the 19th chapter, the, it's, it, the husband is taking the bride on a honeymoon. The, the, Jesus is dressed in white, and, and the, uh, the army behind him are riding white horses, dressed in white too. The honeymoon will be on earth. The kingdom that, that, that folk have been praying about is getting ready to happen after the, after the uh, what you call the apocalypse, a after Jesus destroys the, the armies that's going to try to stop him from uh, taking this kingdom on earth, we, we explain that the Armageddon is actually the gathering place. It's not where the war takes place. They gather in the valley of Megiddo. And, uh, and, and, and uh, I believe it's Joel, it's the it's, uh, valley of Jehoshaphat. That's where the gathering is. And once those millions and millions are gathered from the, from the four corners of the earth, they are going to try to stop Jesus from setting up his kingdom on earth. And that's not going to be a long fight. He's going to destroy him, the, the people, with the sword that is not in his mouth. Read it, read it good. It comes out of his mouth. And there's going to be so much destruction, as I as I talked to you before that that when he comes down there's already blood on his garment because he goes to Edom to get the uh, the people of Israel that was hidden from the Antichrist and he and when he when he comes back his his he's stained because in the 14th chapter of Revelation he you see word that he he crushes them to the point where that the blood comes up to the horse's bridle which naturally gets on his garment, and, and the, the uh, blood goes for, for 200 miles each way, north, south, east, and west, and, and these, these people are destroyed. But when, but when, when these, this army gathers to stop him, he's going to destroy them in a moment's time with the, with the breath, with the spirit of his mouth. But now, after that is over, then we, the kingdom will be set up on earth after the seven year tribulation, after the, the, the years of cleaning up those bodies, after those birds have have have, have plucked those bodies clean and and, and, and drunk with the, with the blood, we you, that would be at least one thousand seven probably around uh, around uh, thirteen years, thirteen or fourteen years before the kingdom will come on earth. The tribulation period Will last, well, the tribulation will last three and, three and one half years, and the great tribulation will last another three and one half years, which is a total of seven years. Those are the seven years of Daniel, that because Daniel was was uh, he dealt with four hundred eighty three years, and then is stopped after four, and and the four hundred ninety years is eight is seven years short. So the, when Jesus was crucified, uh, the day that he was crucified, the time stopped. And the other seven years will take place after the dead in Christ shall rise, after we are caught up together, the, the living are caught up together to meet the Lord in the air, not in heaven, because he uh, moves the mercy, the mercy seat, the beamer seat in the heavens, 
and we're caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And at that very moment, the, the tribulation period starts. It will not be a quiet affair as, as uh, has been preached. If I'm, if I'm driving a car and the folk in my car aren't saved, somebody better take the wheel because there's going to there's gonna be accidents all over the place. Planes are going to be falling out, out of the air. Uh, the uh, computer systems are going to shut down until somebody is trained. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a noisy, a noisy situation. So, so once we are called up, the tribulation period begins, and once that ends, that's when Jesus comes in the 19th chapter of, of Revelation to destroy with, with a sword in his, in his, uh, coming from his uh, mouth, which is a wrath. He comes as a judge. For, and those that don't, do not know God, they will be destroyed. Those that took the mark of the beast and, and, and the number of, of his name will be destroyed. But those of us that are walking with God, we are, we've already been raptured. We don't worry about the tribulation period. We've got to know where we are so, you, so people will, will quit being afraid to read the book because you're messing up your blessing. But anyway, now that that's over, New Jeru John, John saw New Jerusalem, the bride that became the wife of Christ. It's the church universal inside the city. The church has, that was engaged to Christ, that was espoused to Christ, is now the wife of Christ, and everyone in that city is New Jerusalem. The city is the bride, uh, is, the, is the wife of Christ, and those within the city are also. So New Jerusalem comes down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And it doesn't come down to the earth. It comes about mountain high. It has to be high enough so that, that, that uh, God being, being in that city can light up the whole world. His radiance, it will light up the world. It will light up the city. But let me go on. The very last verse of chapter 21 says, that shall in no wise, and we're going to deal with this later on, that in, in no wise in, in, into it anything that defileth, neither worketh abomination, neither, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. See, this was already taken care of back uh, in, in the in, in, uh, in the 21st uh, chapter and the 8th verse because these folk were not overcomers so they could not inherit what is prepared for us. Verse 8 says, compare verse 8, 21 and 8 with verse, 20, uh, with, uh, verse 27 in, in the 21st chapter. But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable, and the murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars. All liars are those that didn't receive Jesus Christ as the, as the Savior and Lord. So guess who their father is? You are of your father the devil, which, which is the lie. He lied from the beginning. You have chosen him to be, to, to be with him, so that's where you go. They shall have their part. In the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. So these individuals is, is what's being talked about in verse 27. No wise, no wise enter anything that defileth, work, uh, neither worketh abomination or maketh alive, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. And after that, I got to get me something that's stronger than what I've got this thing on. Y'all, y'all hold on just a second. I don't have my grandkids uh, helping me today. Now, as as we look at this, going going to twenty two, it's a continuation. It should be verse twenty eight. It's talking about in. What do they see in New Jerusalem? What did he see? What did he show John in New Jerusalem? 
a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. So naturally, this river would, would be pretty much like uh, uh, in Eden. Keep in mind, Eden was a city. There was a garden in Eden. Garden, the garden was not all of Eden, but from Eden was on a mountain. The God, and from Eden, there came a stream that went to the four corners of the earth. You read, read that in uh, Genesis. Uh, don't I? Uh, I don't know. Uh, we'll find it. I I don't have any notes, y'all. So don't. So y'all help me out. <laughs> help me out. So, so in, 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 here we are now. John saw the city, and he begins to tell what's in this city. A pure, pure river of water of life. A pure river of water of life. You see, I want y'all to understand something. Even though we would be in spiritual bodies... That's not going to stop us from eating and drinking because we've already we've, we've we've already been at the marriage supper of the Lamb, and I don't think that folk were just drinking. That it's called a supper, a supper, and when Jesus uh, got up, he ate. When the uh, angels went to see uh, Abraham, they ate. We will consume, you know. Uh, Vegetarians, because uh, there's be no death there, so, which means that that's not you're not going to kill any animals. So that that takes that out. So, so those of you that that uh, that uh, are vegans, you're you're heading in the right direction. But I'm going to have to eat meat to the Lord's some steak. So, but as, as we as we look at this, a pure river, a pure river. Because there was no more sea, but that don't mean there's not going to be any water because there's going to be vegetation. And, 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 and the vegetation, even though God is there, he don't want no fake grass, fake trees and stuff. He's already prepared for that situation because it proceeds out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. The throne of God and of the Lamb. Where is Jesus? Sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's also in the Father. The Father is, is in Him. So they're on the throne together. So, in the and and what and what's the next thing? Uh, in the midst, in the middle of the street, in the middle of the street, and on either side of it was there the tree of life, which bare twelve. Underline manner, so you won't get it mixed up. Underline manner. It didn't. It didn't say twelve fruit. Okay. Twelve manner of fruits, which is fruit crops, and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. Now, if it's going to be twelve manner of fruit, that's mean there's still going to be twelve months. You know, that's that's. You know, that something is still going to, to, you no, know, something is, is not going to change as far as the as the month, twelve month, because the uh, the 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 pure river, clear as crystal, in the midst of and in the midst of it, and on either side of the river, there was the tree of life, which bare twelve man, manner of fruit. Remember, I told you in Eden there was a river with four branches that watered the Garden of Eden. Okay, but, but now we have a river. Go to Psalms 46 and 4. Psalms 46 and 4. This has already been prophesied. It's already been prophesied. And it's not... Is not New Jerusalem the city of God? I don't know what that is. New Jerusalem is the city of God. What do Psalms 46 and 4 say? There is a river. 
the streams were of make glad what? The city of God. The city of God. Now, in in uh, Revelation 22 and 2, the fruit of the tree, the fruit of the trees, the fruit of the trees. What? Why do I say trees? Because if it's one on each side of east, east side of the river, it's got to be at least two. It might, it might be more. I don't know. But, but uh, it's for the nourishment of us immortal saints. We're going to eat. We're going to eat in New Jerusalem. I told you the the angels ate when they were entertained by Abraham, and 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 we think that we're going to go and in the sweet by and by and just do nothing all day. We're going to need nourishment for what we're going to do. We're going to rule nations. We're not going to be on a fast in eternity. No, God isn't like that. He prepares us for what he what he has to uh, for us to do no so so because we're going to have dominion we are ki be kings and priests with him we shall reign where I, g I gave you revelation 5 and 10 we're going to reign on earth we still need nourishment you know and no we don't have wings but we'll be able to move about without them because there is something that you're going to do Get the stuff that's been in your head out. We're not going to be in heaven. Ain't going to happen. I'm going to walk around heaven. Walk. You don't walk here. Some of us need to walk around heaven all day. You're going to be one tired individual if that was true. I don't care how immortal you are. So, so you will see nations mentioned. Where the nations has got, there's got to be governments and responsibilities. What do you think you're going to do as a king and a priest? As a king, you're going to have to, you're going to have authority. As a priest, you're going to have access to New Jerusalem, the city of God. You, you're going to be in and out, in and out. We are going to reign on earth with responsibilities. With responsibilities. Let me go on. What had, what had already happened to the, the earth is now a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no more sea, but now there is a river that flows from the throne of God. Well, me and my eyesight are having problems tonight. Now, next verse. Now, let's talk about that water. Uh, go with me. Where is Get my other Bible. Go, go with me to uh, what the Lord promised Nicodemus in, in John 3 and 5. What did he promise him? What has he got to be born of? He's always talking about the water. Except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he could not enter into the kingdom of God. The, the water is not a natural water, it's spiritual water. And, and here we have a river, what? It's a river of life. Life-giving water. And just like he gives life-giving spirit. And, and the woman at the well. Go, go to the fourth chapter of, of uh, John while you're there. Look at verse 10. Jesus answered and said unto that Samaritan woman, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that said to thee, Give me the drink, thou would have asked him, and he would have given you what? Living water, river of life, 
And the woman said unto him, Sir, you ain't got nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? <laughs> Art thou greater than our father Jacob that gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? And Jesus said, <laughs> Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, that you're talking about. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Life. It's the same water that proceeds from the throne of God. It's, it's going to be actual water. But, but, but here was a, a, a similitude of what Jesus was talking about. So, so, so we can, he said that, that we can drink in a 22 and go back to Revelation 22 and, and 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come. That, that's, that's, the, that's the Holy Ghost and, and, and uh, New Jerusalem or, or us say, come. And let him that heareth come. And let him that thirst come. And whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. See, we are drinking spiritual water, but that, that would be an actual, what, how's that say it? How how's it say? A water of a river of water of life in that first verse of the twenty second chapter. River of water. You didn't think he was going to a dry place, did you? And what about the fruit? What about the fruit? Twelve manner. Twelve manner of fruit. See, you can't, you probably can't name a good eight fruit trees. You, I ain't talking about no vines. I'm talking about fruit trees. I, but I, 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 I don't think you can name 12. I can't. This is going to be a different type tree. You're thinking about regular fruit. But that's not what he is saying. It's a manner of fruit. It's a type of fruit. Uh, go to Proverbs. Go to Proverbs. We're talking about this tree of life. Proverbs 3 and 18. Tell me what... <laughs> tell, tell me what wisdom is. What is wisdom? According to Proverbs 3 and 18. That's going to be on this tree. And keep in mind, we're spirit people. We have gone from glory to glory. We're not going to be in this body. We're going to get be a be in a body that the Lord has designed for us, a glorified body. You and I right now are going from glory to glory. And, and Paul said, if, when this tabernacle dissolves, he's got another building or a body from Lord, not made by hands, eternal in the heavens, in the heavens. So that we can rule on the earth. What is wisdom according to Proverbs 3 and 18? Wisdom is a tree of life to them that hold on her. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. Read it again. Wisdom is a tree of life to them that, hold, that lay hold on her. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. That's a tree of life. Uh, go to Proverbs 11 and 30. Because we already said that wisdom is a tree of life. What does Proverbs 11 and 30 say? The fruit, the fruit, the fruit of the righteous. Is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. We're talking about fruit, y'all. Fruit trees. Proverbs 13 and 12. 
Hope deferred make make it the heart sick, but when the desire coming cometh, when the desire cometh, when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Hope that is seen is not hope. When the desire comes. Proverbs 13, 12. We don't see too many of these on earth, but anyway, a wholesome tongue is a tree of life. That's Proverbs 15 and 4. See, you're thinking in the natural, but we're going to be in the spirit. Those trees are necessary because we are going to be serving nations. So it, it talks about wisdom, righteousness, happiness, helpfulness, hopefulness, and, and wholesomeness. All is brought into the mind to rule by the tree of life. Let's, let me say it again. Wisdom. Righteousness. Happiness, helpfulness, hopefulness, wholesomeness are all brought into mind by the tree of life. That's what's on the trees. That's the purpose from, for eating from that tree. It gives you the ability to be a good king and priest as we rule and reign with him on the earth. And, and, the, and says that the, uh, what about the leaves? In, I'm still on, in, on, in uh, verse 2, uh, 22 and 2. The leaves of the trees, the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. We've got to bring healing to the nations. Now, some translators, uh, what's that Greek word uh, for therapy? Ther therapia? Therapy. The leaves of the tree is for your health, for therapy. No, that's it. Now, now I know, don't think about therapy like down here, but the, 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 that fruit that you had is going to develop you because we're still growing in the kingdom, even though we're spirit people. And, and since it's uh, unlikely that the, <laughs> since you're immortal, that you'll actually have need of healing, either, uh, a physical or uh, uh, spiritual, it's talking about cured. You're cured. The leaves of the trees was for the service of the nations. Get that again. The leaves of the trees are for the service of the nations. The economy of the nations are kept healthy by the leaves of the tree. See, what you don't remember during the 1,000 year reign of Christ, some will, will, will be there that, that were unconverted. Some will go, go in, are able to, to, go, to go into the kingdom. Some will not. Some will go in. Some will not. So the leaves of the trees is for the healing of the nations. Nations. For the economy. And this, you're going to have a continual testimony. You're going to have a continual testimony because where are you? You're with the Creator. You're in service with the Creator. Now, because of what you see in front of you, the ground that had been cursed in Eden is no longer cursed, it's productive. Is productive. So there's no more curse, according to verse 3. Why there's no more curse? We're talking about in New Jerusalem. We're not talking about the whole world now. We're talking about New Jerusalem. Why is there no more curse? Look at verse 3. The throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it. And who are the servants? What are the servants going to be doing? The servant shall serve him. 
shall serve him. And finally, finally, they shall see his face and his name shall be in their forehead. Not on, in their forehead. Inside their forehead. Oh my God. Can you imagine being in the, finally able to sorry, see his face. Finally able to look at him and you're, you're not fearful because you, this is what you have been waiting for. To see my Savior face to face. And there shall be no night there. And they, had no, they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light. And they shall reign forever and ever. Can you imagine the Shekinah glory extending all over the city? There can be no darkness where God is because in Him is light. There's no darkness at all in Him. But the Shekinah glory is going to be in New Jerusalem to the point where the whole earth will be, will, will, will be full of His glory. The the Earth will be lightened up from New Jerusalem. Lord have mercy. See we and and we can have access to heaven, to earth, to New Jerusalem. And no, we don't have wings. We don't need no wings. Uh when you read Daniel uh nine and twenty one, Michael came swiftly. Michael the archangels archange don't have wings. Get this in your system. Cherubims and seraphims, they have wings. Angels do not have wings. But they can move swiftly. And, and when they have an assignment, right there. When uh, Daniel needed help, right there. Told them not, shut up. You're not hungry no more. Swiftly. When you need help, swiftly, the angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him. You have an unseen angel all the time, all the time, that God sends especially for you. And we, at that time, were not in this body. We have been conformed to the image of his Son. Go, to, go with me to Romans uh, 8 and 29. We're not going to be there in these bodies. I want you to get that out of your head. We're not going to be there in these bodies. We wouldn't be able to handle it. Because... He foreknew you before you were born. And what's he doing right now? Romans 8 and 29. For whom he did foreknow, he did predestinate to be conformed to what? Be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn born among many brethren. We are going to be in his image. He's going to be our big brother. I told you right now we are the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we've been conformed. We shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. We'll see him face to face. We're going to be glorified. Oh, happy day. And his name's in our forehead. And look at, go back to something I taught you in Revelation uh, 3 and 8. I know it's concerning the churches.
Yeah. He knows your works right now. And because he knows your works, what has he done for you? Set before you an open door. No man can shut it. And you've got a little strength. As kept my word, has denied, de de denied my faith. Because you have denied, not denied his faith, let's, let's go on and, and uh, see what he says later on. Look at, the, look at the 10th verse. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, <clears throat> he's going to keep you from the tribulation period. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which is the tribulation period, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. He's going to keep you from that. Verse 12. What's he going to do to you? What's he going to do? He that overcomes, I will make a pillar, a strong individual in the temple of my God. He, oh my God. And, and he shall go no more out and he will what? Write upon him the name of my God. Is that not what it said in the 22nd? The, right upon him, in the name of my God, and the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. I told you his name wasn't Jesus. You believe me now? He has a new name right now. He was so named by Gabriel. There were folk named Jesus before he got here. But God has given him a name which is above every name. At the name of Jesus. Not the name Jesus. Every knee shall bow. And he will. That thing he's going to write. Oh, let, me, let me go back go back to Revelation. What did he say he's going to do? See the reason he has to write his name. Because we don't know it. We don't know it. He will write. He's going to write upon us. Look, look, look at verse 4. His name shall be in their foreheads. Didn't he say he was going to do that? He didn't forget. Writes upon us his new name. And, and New Jerusalem, he's already revealed that to us. Go to the very last chapter of, of Ezekiel. The, the, the 35, it just has 35 verses. And, and see what that name is. He's already told us what it is. If we read the book, he didn't promise that he's going, going to show us these things when we get to the other side. Some of that stuff that he's already revealed to us, we, we just don't read it. He, he, he hadn't hidden it from him. I, I know what that, that, that new name is. And I'm going to reveal it to you right now. Verse 35, I ain't worried about those 18,000 measures, which is six miles. And the name of the city from that day shall be what? The Lord is there. Jehovah Shammah. Yama Shammah. He's already revealed to you his new name. The, uh, uh, no, the, the name of the city. The, na the Lord is there. So what does that mean? Inside that city, everywhere you look around, the Lord is there. You look to your left, Yahweh Shammah. Look to the right, Yahweh Shammah. He is everywhere. That's the reason there's no temple in heaven. Because He is the temple. You are around Him 24-7. And He will light up the whole city. You don't have to pray. Because you're in the sanctuary. He is the sanctuary. And he said unto me, wait a minute, God gives you light. He gives you light because he is the light. And he shall reign, not from heaven. Where is it going to be, what have we been talking about? Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, Yahweh Shammah. That's where he's going to reign. We shall reign according to Revelation 5 and 10 on earth. And he's going to be the king on earth. His throne is going to be in, Jer in Jerusalem, on earth. Mm. Verse 6. We're not going to finish tonight. I thought I'd finish this. And he said unto me, These things are faithful and true. 
Ain't that what the Lord calls himself? And the Lord God of the holy prophets. This whole book is about prophecy. I am not a prophet, but I read prophecy. I have the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit of prophecy. Those folk that are calling themselves prophets are not because we have already seen the last prophet, John the Baptist, the, under the law, but now we have his word. When, you, when I get off this, this, uh, this, this face, read Hebrews 1, verse 1 and 2, because he's speaking now by his word. So the, the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must be done shortly. That's about verbatim of what he said in the first chapter of Revelation. He, he, he's, uh, he, God, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And what did he do? He sent and he signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So, here he is saying what he's already said. Things which must shortly come to pass. And I told you in the very first study that shortly is from the Greek word entakos, where you get the word tachometer. It means velocity, speed. When these things start happening, they're going to happen in rapid succession, sometimes one right behind the other, and sometimes at the same time. It's going to happen. And what does he say in verse 7? Behold, I come quickly. Behold, I come quickly. Remember I told you in the first chapter, blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. This is prophecy. Now, hold that Keep your finger right there, and I'm going. I'm going to uh, show you what uh, was said in chapter one. In verse three, blessed is he that readeth, and those that hear the words of this what prophecy and keep those things which are written therein in Taka the time is at hand now he said I'm coming quickly in, in uh, chapter 22 blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book what is prophecy I'm glad you asked turn to the 19th chapter of this revelation and the tenth verse. What is what is prophecy, you prophets? What is prophecy? What is prophecy? What is the spirit of prophecy? When John fell at, at the feet of the angels to worship, he said, See that do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren which have the testimony of Jesus. I have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus. The testimony... The covenant of, oh my Lord, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. No more, no less. You ain't going to get no more. As a matter of fact, I ain't going to get you to read Hebrews. No, I'm going to do it myself. Hebrews, the first chapter. Because you, these wannabes just look, just bypass it. Hebrews 1, the first chapter and the first two verses. God, who at sundry are different times and in divers of various uh, ways, manners, spake in the time, 
time pass unto the fathers by what? what did, how did he speak to them? How did he speak to them in the past? By the prophets. Well, what about in 2021? Hath in these last days, 2021, spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom he made the world. He speaks now by the word. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. Y'all can, can church hop if you want to. Apostle this and prophet this. You better find you a pastor that's called by God and forget about all these names and you find somebody that, 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 that is in the word. And, and Brother Ed said enough this morning about, about that. A pastor, a church has to, a worship center has to have a pastor anointed of God that can show you how can you hear without a preacher. How can he preach unless he be sent? He's got to be sent by God. And if he's sent by God, he's going to study. Oh, Lord, I ain't going to preach. Mm. Let, me, let me get back. Oh, God, get back in character. Huh. You got to study. To show yourself approved unto God. The first thing you do is study. And then you work. See, folk don't want to work. You think God's just going to drop through the Holy Ghost something in your mind and he'll tell you the last hour, you better watch it. Come on. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A work person that needs not be ashamed rightly. Dividing the word of truth. Doing it right. Not for money. Not to impress. Not to make you happy. I don't care if you get happy or not. I want you holy. I want you set apart. That means we had a good time at church today. I had a good time when I went to the club. But it didn't help me none. You can have a good time. Emotion. Bodily, Paul said bodily exercise profited little. It's not going to help you. You've got... Get the word, even David, in, in, even in his wickedness. He said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. He didn't say he wouldn't. He said, I might not. Well, there's a might not, there's a might. But when he does, he can go to God. When the Holy Ghost tells him he has sinned, and he confesses, repents and confesses, it's as though it never happened. It's called justification. Let me get back to Revelation. Oh, it's hard for me not to preach. I'm, I, I miss it. I miss it. But I got. I, I'm on assignment, y'all. I got to. I got to remember what what he's got me doing. Now, I told you, angels don't have wings. What did John do in verse eight? And I, John, saw these things. And I heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel which showed me these things. And what did he say? Don't do that. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophet, and of them that keep the sins of the book. Worship God. He was a man. When you, and you go, this angel is looking like what you're going to look like. He was so much like God that John thought he was God. Okay? This is what we have to look for. We're going <coughs> we're gonna to be in his image after his likeness. Oh my God. This is, this is a man. Gabriel is called both a, both a man and an angel. Man and an angel. Those three men that came that came to Abraham's uh, uh, house, the one stayed stayed back. That was a theophany. That was Jesus Himself. The men left to go to Sodom, but when they got to Sodom, they were called angels. No wings. If they had wings, you would recognize them. And, and, and Hebrew says, "Be careful to entertain strangers, regular folk, for some have entertained angels unaware. If they had wings." You'd be aware. And I, I, I've seen, I know I've seen angels. 
Folk, I didn't even know helping me. So, so he said, I'm one of your fellow servants. You're a servant. I'm a servant. And, and what else was he? Somebody that read, read this book of prophecy. He had to read it because he's keeping the sayings of the book. Is that not what he said? Read your Bibles. Don't read. Lord, y'all please get my book. Please get my book. And write, start writing the dividing. I'm not saying just because I wrote it. But there's truth in it. There's truth in it because we have so messed up. Angels with wings and flying around and putting on our long white robes and telling the story. You ain't going to tell nothing because it's over. You ain't going to tell God how you got over. He got you over. What's wrong with you? And we are going to be dressed in fine linen, which is the righteousness of the saints. If you have on a, a long white robe, you've done Mr. Rapture, and you have become one of the martyrs that didn't take on the mark, mark of the beast or the number of his name, and you were killed, and, and, you, and you were... When you, when you stand before God, just like the 144,000 that were killed after they preached to, to those that came out of, out of great trial and tribulation, the number that no man could number, they were all dressed in white because they were dead. They had been killed during the tribulation period. You're not going through the tribulation period. What, well, I hope not. That depends on your relationship with Jesus Christ. We are going to be dressed in white when... White linen is the fine white linen is the righteousness of the saints. We're going to you better learn learn to like horses because we're gonna ride just like him in fine linen. Read read it when I when you get out. You you're not gonna find saints dressed in no white robes. We want angels to be cherubims, but it's not. They're men. They're men. He said, I am of thy fellow servant. He, he died and went to glory. This, this, this man was raptured. And, and, and of, of thy brethren, the prophets. Old Testament. It was an Old Testament person. And of them to keep the sins of this book. Worship God. Worship God. And unlike Daniel, because John saw the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He saw the Lamb, the Redeemer. He saw the Lamb that, that, was, was, that was slain, you know, and, and he still had the blood unsealed this book, and, he, and it's not going to be sealed anymore. The book is open. He says, seal not the sins of the prophecy of this book. This pastor has been prophesying to you for over a year, but I am not a prophet. Get that in your spirit. I can prophesy without being a prophet. I can put a battery in a car without being a mechanic. Some of you, okay, I, I ain't going to bother you. I, I, I've got a teaching on that later on. Don't seal the sayings. Don't hide these sayings. Of this testament, the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. It's it's here. It's here. I know you've heard that for years. I expect. Oh, I expect him any second now. I didn't say tomorrow. I said any. Any. He said quickly, quickly. I might disappear right now. Uh-huh, you thought you was left behind, didn't you? In the t that's the way it's going to be. That's the way it's going to be. Give me about f five more minutes. The time is at hand. It's, 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 it's no more time. And when that time is over, he that's unjust, <laughs> let him be unjust to you. He that's filthy, don't be filthy still. Too late. He that's righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that's holy, let him be holy still. And with your, if you 
so-called missionaries and preachers quit telling these folk to pray a sinner's prayer. There is no sinner's prayer. A, a person has to believe in the heart and confess with their mouth. <sighs> Tell me what the sinner's prayer is. Who came up with that one? You've got to have the testimony of Jesus Christ. They have to accept the word from you. You have to have a, 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 a little knowledge of, of what you believe and why you believe it and get them to receive it. And these dead, deathbed confessions are going to take a whole lot of folk to hell because there ain't nothing but scared prayers. He that's filthy, okay, let him be. <clears throat> he that's unjust, let him be unjust still. He's filthy. You can be on, on, on your bed dying. You're still filthy. Let him be filthy still. He that's righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that's holy, let him be holy still. Behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according to his work. There, there are de degrees of rewards. I want as many as I can get. That's why these slow folks that I'm trying to, to, to get to accept him, if, they don't, if, if you don't want it, take it. He take from those that have not and give to those that have. That's one, that's one area I'm reading in. As much as you want to give me, Lord. I am Alpha and Omega, the, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they. That's where we're going to start next week. Blessed are they that do His commandments. We ain't talking about the Ten Commandments. We'll, we'll discuss that next week. His commandments. If y'all don't know that we are living in evil times, if you don't even pick up your Bible, listen to the news. Those that have got the shot. Now there's a, a fourth one. Delta variant that's attacking those that have the shots and they and they and the people that have the shots can com communicate the virus in a worse way than those that have not. I told News Down, you remember when I was teaching y'all a few years ago, I told you they're not gonna be able to put that fire in Calif California. Is it that fire still going? Is that fire still going? to about six or seven other states now. And we, you can see the smoke all the way to Charlotte. Flooding. Mudslides. Killing the, the head near the fathers and, and the babies. To keep the, the population down. Today is the day of salvation. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just trying to give you truth. If you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, it's a matter of faith, and you confess with your mouth that God raised him up from the grave, you, should be, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. It's not God's will that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Parents, pray over your children. Because if they are in sin, they can't pray. You are their avenue. You are their avenue. Because the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail of much. Live right in front of them so you can talk to them. It's not his will that any man should perish, but all should come to repentance. I pray that you receive this tonight in Jesus' name. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this time. I thank you, Lord, for the healing that's taking place, even in my own body. I thank you, Lord, for giving me the strength to do what I'm doing. I realize, God, that time is of an essence. You said you come quickly. And that's not necessarily the rapture. We, we don't know how much time we have in this life to death hisses of, of, of the rapture. We just want not to be getting ready, but to be ready. 
I pray, God, that you be satisfied with the work that I've done and I'm doing. And, Father, bring folk to Christ. Lord, my soul, my soul, my... I'm, I'm so unhappy when I see the lost and, and people not even caring, not witnessing. It. Those of us that have been here for some time, we don't know everything, but Father, the things that we know we should be able to share. Father, save the lost. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'll see you Wednesday. I'm praying about three things. Three to talk about because we need to deal with issues in the church such as such as uh, spiritual gifts such such as uh, well I'm not I'm not I'm not going I'm not going to throw it out there because I'm still praying I'm still praying and pray for this pastor you know I don't I don't uh, complain I don't I don't have bad days but I have bad moments that mess with my days so so yeah. Though I, I, not everybody, if you're not right with God, leave me alone. Leave me alone. I don't want your prayers. I want you to pray for yourself to, so that you'll get in a situation where you can pray for me. Because it's only the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous that avail as much. And I pray that you're right with God so you can pray for me. God bless you.